This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are at a very fun spot in the sports calendar because right now we've got not just MLB playoff races heating up, we've got NFL preseason cooking right now. It's the FedEx Cup playoffs over on the PGA side of things. I'm excited for the NASCAR playoffs getting ready. So we got the intersection of a lot of fun sports going on right now, and it's a great time to be a better because there's so much fun stuff to choose from. No matter what your specialty may be, you probably got fun stuff going on. We're going to go through baseball for today and then recap stuff that we went through last week some good stuff over on the nascar side of things hopefully you benefited from that we're going to get you set for monday's mlb slate talking money lines strikeout props and some dingers and hopefully get you uh, on the right way winning some cash to open off this new week in a fun time in the sports calendar welcome on into covering the spread that's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com here to break down the MLB slate for today. And like I said, we'll also go through what went down last week here on the show, recap some of our bets in the NFL preseason and in the NASCAR calendar and the Field of Dreams game as well. All that right here. We'll try to keep the covering the past segments available when we can. Just depends on timing and stuff like that, but um, we'll try to squeeze that in for today. Scheduling note for this week, we have the same show tomorrow we had last week on Tuesday, Pitching Ninja on to break down his strikeout props of the day, Brandon Gadula on to break down this week's PGA contest as a PGA event as well. Wednesday, Ed Fang will be in to break down some college football. I think we're talking some future stuff there. That should be a lot of fun. Then on Thursday, I'm going to record the podcast ahead of time because I'll be out Thursday, Friday. I will go through the Thursday MLB slate. So I'll post that overnight to hopefully get you numbers before they move. I wish I could do this every day, but schedule doesn't quite allow for it. So I'll put that up Wednesday night to break down Thursday's MLB slate, and I'll go through some NASCAR stuff there too. So if you want to get some more NASCAR stuff, I want to get Thursday MLB breakdowns, all of that Thursday, no show Friday because I'm gone. Similar schedule next week, going to Ireland for the Northwestern versus Nebraska game, which should be a whole lot of fun. So uh, we'll have shows Monday through Thursday this week. Get all those by subscribing to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. We'll dig into some MLB money lines for today in just one second. But first, NFL kickoff is still a few weeks away, but you can get into the action now on FanDuel Sportsbook with the NFL Super Bowl win bonus. Right now, anyone who places at least a $50 Super Bowl winner bet will get $5 back for each win your team has during the regular season. There are also a ton of other futures markets available, like the team win totals, division winners, player props, and so many more. There's no other place to get the football season started than on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook and official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states only. Bonus issued is non withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max free bet $50. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9 with it. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE and wire text to open Y. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. In West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig into this MLB Monday slate. There are two money lines right now where my numbers are showing some value. And those are on the Twins at minus 198 versus the Royals and on the Mariners at minus 104 facing off of the Angels. Let's start here with the Twins because there's a slightly bigger edge on this one relative to my numbers. I've got the Twins at 69.7% to win this game. Their implied win odds at minus 198 are 66.44. They did move, uh, and you might be able to catch some minus 195s, minus 190 still out there. So check around to see what you can get because uh, FanDuel moved, shockingly, right before recording to minus 198. So check to see what your best number available is in the Twins. But even at minus 198, I do like it. The run line here is uh, plus 102 for the Twins to cover minus one and a half. And I am going to go with the run or the, the money line here over the run line. 
And it's the same discussion we had last week where I always want to bet into the lower hold market. And this is still the lower hold market in this game, the money line versus the run line. That's one thing. And second, the Twins offense isn't as good against lefties as righties. Facing Chris Bubich for today, that does hurt them a smidge in terms of being able to win this game comfortably versus winning this game by just a run or less. Joe Ryan has had some rough outings recently for sure, uh, but I think those were against the Dodgers and the Padres. When he's had plus matchups, Ryan's been pretty good throughout this season. And this is a plus matchup for sure. This Royals offense They've got some guys. I like some of their young hitters, but they're not the same lineup they were when they had Benintendi, Merrifield, et cetera, et cetera. The Twins, they're back at home. Bullpen is improved post-deadline. I think they're worth it at minus 198 here. And if you're listening here, it's shifted to minus 200. I think that even minus 205, I'd be okay with taking this one. My numbers would still, still show value there. So even minus 205, I'm okay with it, uh, with the Twins on the money line for today versus the Royals, but 198 right now is good. Check around to see what the best number for you is there. The Mariners are popping for a couple different reasons. The first one is that I love Luis Castillo. We'll talk about him in a separate section, no spoilers, but I'm also not sure how much leash Shohei Otani is going to be getting for the next couple of weeks. The Angels are super, super out of it, and they've cut back on his pitch count his past couple of starts, which makes total sense. Why would you burn bullets on Shohei Otani in a year where you're not going to the playoffs. So I think the Angels should do that, despite the fact I selfishly want to watch Otani for as long as possible. I think they probably should do it. And it seems like they might be based on his recent pitch count. So that's one thing here. And everything outside of Otani favors the Mariners here. They have an elite bullpen. They have a better offense than the Angels do right now. I've got the Mariners at 52.7% to win this game versus 50.9 it implied. So it's less value than the Twins, but I actually feel better about this one personally than I do about the Twins. Uh, so the Mariners, minus 104, I feel good about that. I bet them down to minus 110 uh, just because the factors I mentioned. My numbers are viewing Otani as being a full go effectively, except for his pitch count is down. That's the one thing where I'm not, you know, uh, not expecting a full Otani there. If I account for maybe 10 fewer pitches from Otani, that would skew things a bit more towards Seattle. So favorite money line of the day is Seattle minus 104, but I do like the Twins at one, minus 198 as well. Uh, again, I would go with the Mariners down to minus 110 and the Twins down to minus 205 or so. Let's stick with that Mariners game as we transition here to some strikeout props for today. The one that does pop for me and I'm willing to bet is Luis Castillo. And I specifically want to go to the alternate market here over on Fanta. You can go, uh, you can bet over three plus, you know, three plus strikeouts, four plus strikeouts, et cetera. For Castillo specifically today, I want to take him to get eight plus strikeouts at plus 132. And Castillo opened this morning at Fanduel up at seven and a half. His, his number was seven and a half, and it went down to six and a half. Once other books open and had Castillo strike a prop at six and a half. So people saw the discrepancy, bet the under on FanDuel, pushed that number down to FanDuel to six and a half. I'm not really sure that should have been the case because Castillo goes crazy deep into games. He has gone 108 or more pitches in five of his past seven starts. He went 103 in one of the exceptions. The one game where he didn't go super deep in the game, not 100 plus pitches, was his final start at the Reds, and they were trying to trade him. So why would you have him go 116 pitches when you're trying to move this guy and might get less in return if he happens to get hurt going deep in the game? Basically, they just let him go as long as he wants. And Castillo is racking up strikeouts. He's had eight or more strikeouts in five of those seven games, despite facing the Yankees three separate times in that stretch. He did go over seven and a half in two of those three starts versus the Yankees specifically. I've got a projection for 8.57 strikeouts for tonight. So when you put someone there, he typically would get to eight strikeouts about 55% of the time. So I should be good with plus money. It's just a question of whether or not I can get a better number later on. My guess is that now that FanDuel is in line with other books, the action should be more even here. So I would not expect this number to keep on lengthening. But with that said, I took it at plus 126. It is lengthened to plus 132. So clearly I didn't read that well there. But it's plus 132 right now. I think that, again, I was cool with it at plus 126. I'd expect it to push back that direction as the day goes along. 
if you see it where it keeps on lengthening it over it uh, at uh, eight plus strikeouts, that probably reads, means I had a bad read on the market. So proceed with caution. Like if it's plus 140 when you listen to this later on, that could be a concern. Uh, maybe then you lower enthusiasm around Castillo a bit. But personally, I think that this number is too low. And so with it being plus 132 right now, I do like the uh, the eight plus strikeouts for Luis Castillo for today, facing the Angels, a high strikeout offense, guy who goes deep in games. I think all that adds up really well to make him a quality strikeout prop bet for today. His over odds in my model at six and a half are pretty solid. So I don't mind if you want to go that route, want to go with over six and a half versus the alternate market. But I think this is a spot where swinging for the fences is worth it. And I would like to do so via Castillo for today. So the official recommendation for me is over uh, A plus strikeouts, which is plus 132 at FanDuel right now. The other number I'm monitoring right now and have not actually taken yet is Carlos Carrasco, five and a half strikeouts over at FanDuel. It's minus 112 right now. I was kind of hoping this number would go the other way because I've got Carrasco around 57% to go over five and a half strikeouts. So there is a bit of value. The reason I didn't bite when it was minus 106 was because the Braves did just see Carrasco two starts ago. So there is some familiarity here. It's also hot in Atlanta for tonight. He's on the road. If that number were to move the other way, like let's say it gets to even money, which I'm thinking it probably won't now that it's minus 112, I might bite at that point. But, you know, about five percentage points of value right now on Carrasco versus number, I think I'd want a little bit more before diving in. So if you have more confidence in Carrasco than I do, you're not worried about familiarity, anything like that, I think that over five and a half is very much in play. I mean, personally, I've not done it yet because I do want to see if it'll move the other direction. I want more of an edge relative to what my numbers say in order to account for some subjective concerns that I have uh, just based on, you know, narratives, uh, familiarity, road, stuff like that. So not biting yet, but it is one I'll monitor. And if you have more confidence in Carrasco, I would not dissuade you from buying in there. As far as home run props for today go, uh, we talked last week about the Orioles versus Yusei Kikuchi, and they get a rematch in Canada for today. So I'm okay going back to the Orioles here. The one bummer is that Anthony Santander didn't go to Toronto last time because of vaccination status. Uh, I would bet he's probably not changed his stance since then, so he's probably not going to play. Santander is probably one of the guys I would turn to in theory if I were to bet the uh, home run prop market. But I'm assuming as of right now that he's probably not going to play for today. The one guy who could be kind of interesting is Ramon Urias. He's plus 450 at FanDuel. You can get him at 6-1 to one in some spots. I would not bet him at FanDuel, but I would check him out other places because Rios has a 44% fly ball rate versus lefties, makes good hard contact as well. I would probably give him the biggest sniff. I also would check out Ryan McKenna. He's plus 520 at FanDuel, but plus 850 in some other spots. So again, you know, shop around, find the best number in Ryan McKenna. It's probably not going to be at FanDuel based on what I'm seeing right now, but McKenna has good numbers against lefties. He hits leadoff against them, or he has the past couple of times. So I do like McKenna. I would say, though, this depends on the house rules of your sports book because most places, FanDuel included, will allow the bet to stand if the guy records a plate appearance. So let's say McKenna is not in the lineup but winds up pinch hitting later on, you're getting just that one plate appearance. I'd rather wait until he's officially in the lineup before biting in there. You might get a worse number, Slightly worse number, but that is okay. There are, I believe, some books where if he's not in the lineup, they'll refund it. But FanDuel, I know, is um, a, a book where if he gets a plate appearance at all, that bet will stand. So know your house rules. If it is a shop like FanDuel where the bet will stand if he is even in the lineup, then I'd hold off and see if he is in there. Specifically, he's batting leadoff. Um, I think then even plus 700, 600 or so would be a good number for McKenna. Uh, but wait to see if he's in the lineup just to make sure because he's a platoon guy and that could be a concern there. Other spot I don't mind for some home runs, going back to the Twins, facing off with Chris Bubich. And Bubich does let up a lot of hard contact. Not a big fly ball guy, but a lot of hard contact. So the guy I'm most into here is Jose Miranda. Miranda, uh, plus 480 to go deep on fan. I actually think that's a pretty fair number because he's been smoking the ball recently. He's been in the ball really well ever since he came back up. He got sent down to AAA for like a day in 
May or June. When Royce Lewis came up, they sent down Miranda for like a day. He came back up and basically ever since then has hit the ball really well. Uh, six home runs versus lefties this year and 89 plate appearances. The batted ball numbers, I think it's a 50% fly ball rate versus lefties, 51% versus lefties versus 33% versus righties. A lot of hard contact. I think Miranda's a really good hitter. Plus 480, I actually would bite on again. As always, there's a big no, a discrepancy in strikeout no, or a home run numbers from book to book. So shop around, see what you can find. But I would bite at plus 480 on Miranda uh, to home run for to hit a homer today for the Twins. My favorite number on the Twins is Miranda at plus 480. I can always talk myself into Byron Buxton, but plus 290, a little bit short. So uh, I think Miranda, the guy of choice there. As mentioned, I do want to try to keep going through the recaps the last week. We're going to keep on doing that now. We'll do that now, go through some stuff from last week, but that is all we have for baseball for today. So let's go back through last week's shows. Uh, on Tuesday, we had Brandon Gadula on to talk about some golf. Uh, Will Zalatoris, what a ride. Um, Adam has my win pick uh, over on our, our DFS show, uh, the Heat Check Fantasy Podcast, and I'm trying to win this season-long battle versus Brandon, where we pick winners each week relative to their odds at FanDuel Sportsbook. I was in the hole, but Will Zalatoris was my pick for last week, 22-1. to 1, So I'm now ahead. There are only two events left. I'm not sure if I'll be able to hang on to that because – uh, Brandon's pretty good at this. Uh, he's better at golf than I am. I've just gotten lucky a couple of times, which has uh, helped me a lot. Uh, his picks here on the show were Scotty Scheffler, Matt Fitzpatrick, Sung J.M., Billy Horschel. Those are the, the winners he liked for this one. I like Scheffler a lot too. That one didn't work out, but I thought Scheffler was a good pick. I just picked out Taurus because I like the odds better uh, for that one there. So uh, no winners there, but hopefully I can hit a winner on the heat check again this week because I need the padding to uh, to had my lead versus Brandon in our win bets for each week. The preseason DFS or preseason uh, betting show we had was with Joe Ostrowski. You can find him on Twitter at Joe Ostrowski. The first one he talked about was the Chiefs plus three and a half against the Bears. And it closed the Chiefs minus one and a half because of the Patrick Mahomes news that he would play. And the first half did hit. So we talked to Joe and he was like, hey, in general, you probably want to bet first halves in the preseason because... You're kind of, you don't really know what's going to happen in the second half. You can kind of predict playing time, stuff like that. So Joe said, bet first halves and bet the Chiefs. Hopefully you did go that route because of the full game, the Bears actually did cover. So touchdown Trevor Simeon uh, back in Chicago, back in his non-native land, but previous land, uh, racking up the tutties. So touchdown Trevor, fully back. How dare you disrespect him, Joe? Uh, but if you got the first half number there, you did win. So hopefully you went with that one versus the full game spread, but good closing line value for Joe on that one. Joe liked the Cardinals plus two and a half against the Bengals. That one closed at plus one and a half. And uh, that one did cash both the full game and the first half. So the Cardinals good bet from Joe there uh, as they did do well versus the Bengals. Their other one was Dallas plus two and a half. That actually closed at four and a half, the wrong direction. And then Denver won that game, I believe, 17 nothing. They played really well the entire game. So they uh, won the first half won, uh, and then held uh, held court in the second half as well. So depends on the markets you bet. Hopefully you took Joe's advice and did bet the uh, the first halves for the Chiefs and the Cardinals. Got in on that Chiefs number before. Uh, moved pretty steadily uh, in their favor. Good week from Joe. Good read from him with the way the markets will go, even if the results weren't always exactly what you were looking for. But again, hopefully you bet the first has there. As far as my stuff from last week, in the later on in the week, on Thursday, we had the MLB Field of Dreams game and some NASCAR stuff from Richmond. Uh, the Field of Dreams game did get the Cubs money line at minus 102. Felt pretty good about that the entire time. No real big sweat there. The other one I had in that game was Seiya Suzuki to hit a home run at plus 500. He had a double, I think, in his first plate appearance, but no home runs there. So that one did not cash. But we did get Cubs minus 102 on the money line in that game. For Richmond, uh, the truck series race did not go well. I had Ben Rhodes and Grant Enfinger to win, uh, both at 12-1. to 1. Rhodes went a lap down, like in the third stage, was really bad. He was not fast in practice, didn't qualify well, was bad. Enfinger ran top four most of the night, but like never really in contention. It was kind of just Chandler Smith versus John Hunter Nemechek, so... You know, he finished fourth, I think, but like it didn't matter. He wasn't it really in contention there. Made up for it Sunday, though, because the bets recommended on the show were Joey Logano to win, 
He did not win, but he led 150 or six or so laps. He also did finish top 10. I had that minus 135, that one cash. Other bet recommended was Kevin Harvick to win at 16 to one. Kevin Harvick won the dang race. It was a lot of fun because the guys my model was highest on the entire week were Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano. Logano dominated most of the race. Harvick dominated the final stage. So we get the win there. I didn't have many bets on anybody not named Harvick or Logano uh, for Sunday's race. Didn't get the Logano top five, which was kind of a bummer, but um, still a really good week. So hopefully we can duplicate that uh, going forward in the show here. Good start with uh, the Harvick and Logano bets at Richmond, and we'll see what we can do for Watkins Glen coming up this week. I think that is going to be a fun race for sure. That's the way they have here uh, for today. Again, check around on the MLB numbers. Make sure you're getting the best number. Number as always, have as many books as possible. Of course, I'm wearing the FanDuel hat, but you know, we want to pe- preach best practices here as always. Find the best number. If stuff has moved to a point where I said it wasn't comfortable, I'd stay away. You know, it's kind of the, the deal with betting. You're not always going to get the get in on the action before the number moves out of your favor. That's how it's going to go. I'll try to get it where I can stream these MLB shows live on my Twitter account. I've not gotten there yet. I have to check with the tech people here at uh, at NumberFire to see how I can get that going. But we'll try to get that, to try to get these numbers to you as soon as possible. If you got any questions for me, if numbers have moved in a weird way or have moved to a point where you're questioning things, hit me up on Twitter, at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. More than happy to talk through things there and let you know if I'm okay with that number, if a number has come down I did not discuss, whatever it may be, hit me up on Twitter at Jim Sonnet so we can talk it out there. Also, do not forget to subscribe to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Tomorrow, we have Brandon Gadula and Pitching Ninja Rob Freeman on. Talks in baseball, talks in PGA. It's going to be a lot of fun. Wednesday with Ed Fang. Thursday, talking MLB and NASCAR. It'll be a good week. We're looking forward to it once again. Good luck to you all tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 